Okay, I had a lot of fun uh, doing that video series on the power supply, uh, the Back to Basics on power supplies. And uh, I'd like to do another one, and it's for a different reason, but I'm going to use power supply as the, uh, as the culprit. <laughs> so I'm going to be looking at this, uh, this unit here. Uh, this is my kind of everyday power supply. I just like it. I use it all the time, and I've modified it so that it, it's a little bit better for me. Uh, the first thing I did was put a very accurate display on it, so I know exactly the voltage coming out of this thing. This is a really accurate display, um, a five-digit display. Anyway, so I can set the uh, I can set the voltage very accurately, and uh, I replaced this potentiometer uh, to a ten turn. So it used to have just a one turn pot in it, and I put a ten turn in now, so I can set voltages very, very accurately. Uh, you can see that you know that this display, although it's close, I really, I really want to be able to uh, look at exact numbers and uh, not have to hook up another instrument. Right? A lot of times you have a power supply, and then really to check the voltage, and you need to hook up a voltmeter and yada yada yada. So anyway, now I have a very, very accurate. Uh, you know, it's only like five, five or eight dollars to buy one of these things. I just, I just, I glued it on the front. It's just epoxied onto the front. And uh, like I said, I replaced the, uh, the 10 turn pot uh, on the front. So uh, what I want to do is go through the schematic of this thing. Uh, some things will look familiar, some things won't look familiar. Um, so let's take a look at that. I'll put a link down in the description for this schematic if you'd like to follow along. Um, this is an HY1803D. Uh, made by what? Mastec, I think. Yeah, um, and this is the schematic of the uh, of the supply that I've got. And so the point of this video is not, although we're going to describe the power supply and you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of that. The point of the video is to not be scared. <laughs> a lot of times when you first start looking at schematics and trying your hand at repairing instruments and stuff, you will be completely overwhelmed by the schematic or the documentation or whatever you've got. You'll just, you'll just be at a loss. You'll just not know where to start. And it's very frustrating and very intimidating. And you just kind of give up. You go, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to fix that thing. I mean, maybe throw it away and buy a new one when you might have been able to fix it, right? Or if you can get into the habit like me, I like buying broken things and fixing them. And so you have to be able to navigate your way around uh, schematics and um, understand what you can. And maybe you don't understand everything, but you understand enough to get the job done. And so the point of this video, again, is to not be intimidated by a big schematic with, with lots of circuits that you have no idea what they're doing. And uh, I'm going to do this a lot like my teaching skills, which is to break it apart. We're going to break it apart into little units, okay? And, and this time what we're going to do is we're, and the way that we're going to go ahead and isolate units to take a look at are ones that we sort of feel like we might understand that, right? And so let's zoom in here a bit. Where's my zoomer? There it is. So, I mean, we certainly can understand this, right? Here's a fuse, a switch. It fits switches on both sides. That's nice. Transformer, right? Looks like it's wired for 110 um, or 220. Yeah, it looks like it's wired for 220. Um, and so 210, these would both be in parallel. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So this is the, uh, uh, this part we would understand. And this is the core of the transformer. And this transformer has two sections. Um, and so, you know, up to this point, you know, we're not intimidated a bit. You know, we've seen this before, we understand this, um, and uh, we can say, oh, wait a minute, let's see here. That looks familiar. There's four diodes and they're arranged in a, in a particular way. I bet you that's a bridge rectifier. It's not in the diamond shape, but I bet you that's a bridge rectifier. And we can redraw that and validate to ourselves that that really is a bridge rectifier, right? So we have, we have, uh, transformer, we have bridge rectifier, and then the very next thing is a capacitor. So that's, that's just typical power supply stuff, right? The center tap comes to the bottom of the, of the electrolytic, and then this generates plus and minus voltages, and they come out onto these two uh, capacitors. So we have a plus voltage here, and we have a negative voltage here. So we really should understand everything up to this point, right? And so that's good. And then we say, okay, well, what else can I understand? Well, let's see, I can understand this. It's a three terminal regulator. Well, that's that's pretty easy. So if all you had was, was maybe this part of the schematic, you'd say, oh, well, I, I understand all of that. This is just a 
transformer, it's generating a plus voltage and it's going through a 7812. So I'm going to have 12 volts here. And then this must be ground. And then you might be a bit confused at first and say, oh, this is a plus and minus supply. Yeah, it's generating plus and minus. And so here's minus. But there's no three terminal regulator over here. So maybe that's the point where we stop and we say, okay, I understand this, but I, I don't understand everything else, right? So maybe what we can do is we can kind of maybe use a magic marker. And when we go through the schematic, we'll kind of highlight what we understand and, and we'll, we'll see what's, uh, what's left to understand. So let me see if I can find a magic marker. Okay, I found a pink one. <laughs> All right, so we understand this. And we understand this. And we understand this. And we understand the bridge rectifier. And we understand these, these capacitors. So we understand all of this. We understand the, the three terminal regulator and ground. So, so far we're understanding all of this. Okay. So all of this. And then, uh, so we understand the core, understand all of those lines. All right. So let's come down over here. What can we understand here? Oh, wait a minute. There's a bridge rectifier. Oh, we see another bridge rectifier. So we understand that. And it has a capacitor across it. That's kind of strange. So we don't understand that. So we can say, okay, well, I understand the diodes. That's just a bridge rectifier. Okay. And I understand the transfer, but there's a switch here. Why is there a switch? And um, so we don't, we don't quite understand that. So we'll, we won't highlight that yet because we don't quite understand these two things. And then here's the, here's the, uh, capacitor across this bridge rectifier. So this bridge rectifier is only generating positive things. So it's wired up different than this bridge rectifier. This one's doing plus and minus. This one's only doing plus. Okay. So we understand, we understand that diode. And then there's a resistor across the, uh, we understand that capacitor. Uh, there's a, there's a resistor across it. So we talked about that. That's a bleed resistor, right? So we understand that one. And this is ground. So we understand quite a bit so far. Okay. Um, so we're not quite sure the rest yet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to jump around. So we're going to say, okay, well, I understand the input. Maybe I understand the output. Okay. So go to the output. Let's see. Oh, here's our plus and our minus. So those are the connectors on the front. That's where our voltage comes out. And across those two is a diode. We talked about that. That's a protection diode. It's in upside down. So if you ever hook anything in upside down, hopefully it'll blow the fuse of that thing and save, save your power supply. So we understand why there's a, a diode in there. And there's a couple of capacitors across the output. Well, that seems pretty, pretty logical. You have a, some, some buffering on the output. So there's a, a big capacitor for low volt, for low Hertz, low, low frequency stuff. And, and one for high frequency stuff. There's a 0.1, there's a 470 microfarad and a 0.1 microfarad. Okay, we understand all that stuff. Here's earth ground, we understand that. Okay, mm, I don't know what this is, and I don't know what that is yet. Uh, I don't know why it's way up there, and I don't know. Okay, so that's what I, so this is what I know. Okay, so, so this will be our starting point. We'll say, okay, I understand that, I understand this, and I understand this, so let's go ahead and start picking off some other, some other sections. And maybe if we redraw them, then we will understand them, okay? And so let me get some paper and pen, and we'll start redrawing some things. Okay, here's our 12 volts. It comes out, and it goes into a... Oh, there's a capacitor here. I understand that. So this is another buffering capacitor here. This is a 330 microfarad, so I understand that. And then it goes here to this weird thing. And I've never, ever, ever seen one of those before. Okay. I have no idea what that is, but there's a part number on it. Okay. It's a WL431. Okay. And so you grab your cell phone and you look it up. You go Google it. <laughs> okay. WL. 431. I always put data sheet at the end. I say, I say WL431 data sheet. And what I get is, um, there's the part. It's three, three leads. Looks like a transistor. So, and it says transistor right here. And then we will come here. It says transistor. And then we'll come down 
and we'll say, huh, let's see here. Let's, uh, let's see if we can find a data sheet on one of these things. And this says it's an integrated circuit. That's not a very good, that's not a very good, uh, not a very good data sheet. Ah, okay, so I found one. So it's not WL, it's actually TL. So some manufacturers will have a different letter in the front. So this one's WL431, but it's actually a TL431. And that sounds familiar. I've used those before. Okay, and so let's zoom in on it. Okay, can you see that on the camera? I think, oh, there's a big, a big ugly reflection. There we go. Um, so it looks like a Zener diode with an extra leg on it. So cathode anode, that's diode, and then it has reference. So this is a funny little part. Um, it has a Zener diode in it. It has a two and a half volt Zener diode in it, but it also has some other circuitry in it, okay? Um, and you can use it like a three terminal regular, like, like a, a, three, three seven, uh, a 317, where you, you use the, the middle leg to, to vary the voltage, okay? And so, if you have uh, a resistor string and you have that Zener diode over here, okay, and you usually have to have a resistor at the top of one of these things, okay, you might have something like this, and that middle leg comes off and you can connect it to things and then you can move it up and down. And what it is is it'll It'll do everything it can to make sure this is two and a half volts. So if say this was 10k and this is 10k, then you'll generate 5k, uh, five volts out here. It'll be, it'll be five volts, half of five volts is two and a half. So you can use this like a, a three terminal regulator and it's just drawn funny. Um, but that's what it's doing. It's a, it's a reference though. It's not a regulator, it's a reference, two and a half volt reference. And if you tie the two and a half volts so if you have the part and you have that, that middle leg and you tie that middle leg to the top, then it, this thing looks exactly like a two and a half volt Zener. Okay, so that's all this is, is a two and a half volt Zener. All right, they're great little parts. I've got a, I've got a stockpile of them because I use them a lot. So they're very, very accurate and they're very good for setting references, okay? So what we've just done here is we've put a Zener diode in here, in fact, we can draw it in. We just so we have a reminder, right? I'm going to draw it in I just to remind myself. Oh, that's just the Zener, okay? And um, we know it's two and a half volts, so we'll put in uh, two point five here. That'll remind us. And then, like I said, you usually have to have a current limit on Zener diodes, and so they're using a four hundred and seventy ohm resistor into this Zener diode and creating two and a half volts. So now we understand that circuit, okay? So we can mark it off. We understand that, we understand all of that, and then they put a capacitor at the end to make it nice and smooth, so we understand all of that. So there we go, so we understand all of that. And then we look down, we say, oh, wait a minute, there's a couple other Zener diodes here. Resistor, Zener diode, resistor, Zener diode. Oh, we understand that too, but they're upside down. And remember, I told you not to be afraid of things that are upside down. Um, it's just negative voltages, okay? So resistor, Zener, and a resistor Zener. We know both of those things. And this is a negative six volt Zener, and this is a minus 12 volt Zener. So we're generating minus six volts, and we're generating minus 12 volts, and we're generating uh, 12 volts, plus 12 volts, and we're generating plus 2.5 volts. So we're generating all kinds of voltages here. Um, yeah, it's good. So now we understand this whole thing at the top here. That's great. Um, and then it'll be used places, okay? So let's come down over here. Remember, we didn't understand what was down here. Okay, maybe we can maybe we can figure this out. Uh, let's draw. Let's redraw the bridge. I know it's a bridge. So let me redraw it. Uh, bridges look like this. They look like a square, forty-five degree square, and they have arrows on them. Okay, and the arrows always point one direction. So they all point, they all point right. And then we'll put the cathodes on. There we go, there's our, that's, there's our bridge. And we are bringing in uh, AC. And then we're gonna bring off these two points, okay? 
the plus one's going to go this way, and the minus one's going to go this way. And so the thing that we don't understand is that there is a capacitor right here. So we'll put it in where it is. It's, it's here in the middle, and it's going between the wires that connect to the transformer. So it's here. Okay. And what's its value? 103. So it's a 0 0.01 microfarad. Pretty small. Pretty small little guy. All right. Okay. Um, and then, so we're, we're still don't understand why it's there, but we know what it's doing. Uh, you know, where its location is. And then there's this weird switch. And this switch is kind of a high-low switch. It's either connecting this winding or connecting this winding. Kind of like, you know, whether you're hooked for 110 volts or 220 volts. Um, you have this uh, switch here. So maybe there's a high-low switch somewhere on the instrument. And there's not. What this is, this is the, that relay. Remember on the other video that I showed you, I talked about if you went up in ranges, sometimes relays click in to go into different voltage ranges, so you don't have to disseminate as much power. So this power supply has two ranges. It has a low range and it has a high range, okay? So this is actually a, uh, a relay, right? So there's some relay coil that runs, that, that runs this thing, but the relay coil isn't drawn. So how does, it, how does that work, okay? So then you're going to have to dig around that a lot of times with switches, sometimes we'll put half of the switch here and half of the switch here, or things can go in different places. So uh, we'll look around and see if we can't find that, uh, see if we can't find that coil. It must be somewhere, okay? So way over here, there's a box, and I don't know what that box is. And I come over here, and this, these say SK1, and this says K1. So SK1 and K1. So this is the switch part of it, and that's the relay part of it, okay? Or the coil part of it. So this is actually the coil, okay? So the coil's right here, and you kind of give a, a giveaway because there's a, there's, a, there's a diode across it. Whenever you have a relay, you need to put a clamping diode on a relay to keep voltages from spiking and, and screwing things up. So um, yeah, so that's the coil, and that's the, um, that's the clamping. Uh, relay for the coil onto the relay, and it's a high-low, high-low switch. We don't know what voltage the switch at, but we know it's high-low, okay? Because there's different windings, okay? So now I say that we understand this, and we understand this, so we'll, we'll, we'll mark that off, okay? So we understand this, and um, let's see how that relay is used. What turns what turns that relay on and off, right? So we'll come down here, and we'll say, oh, there's a transistor that turns that relay on and off. So that makes sense. It goes to ground. So when this transistor is energized, when it's on, it, it turns the relay on. And then we look over here, and we say, ah, there's an op amp here. Uh, is it amplifying something? What's it doing? And you say, well, what function does the relay perform? Well, it's a high-low, which means you have to shift gears. You have to know when to shift gears. So when you maybe you come up to 10 volts, it shifts to high, and then you go from 10 to 20 volts, right? This, this one actually goes between 0 and 18 volts. So maybe it's 0 to 9 volts is low, and 9 to 18 volts is high. So you want to switch right around 9 volts. And so maybe this is a comparator, okay? So we'll say, okay, I think I understand. I think this is a comparator. Does that make sense? Um, what is it comparing, right? So then you say, well, it's going to compare two things. That's what comparators do. So what's the one thing that it, that it compares? Well, let's see. It's comparing, it's comparing this and that, right? The plus and the minus. And the minus comes over here. Ah, the minus comes over here. Oh, wait, there we go. Remember, this is uh, ground down here. Remember, this is the ground. We, we, we figured that out. This is our ground. Okay, so ground's coming in, and then ground comes up. And then remember, this is our plus up here, right? So we have plus 12 here. Just a minute, I'm waiting for my plumber. All right, the plumber said I need a new faucet, so I ordered a, it's a double sink, so I ordered two new faucets, and those will come here on 
in a couple days and then he'll come back out and put them in. So that's good. They need to replace it anyway. They're 20 years old. Um, okay, so we were looking at this and we said that up here we had 12 volts. So we have 12 volts here and here we have zero volts. So this is ground and we have two resistors. So let's calculate them here. We have a 224K and a 15K. Okay, so we can take 15 and divide it by 24 plus 15 and multiply that by 12 and that will be the voltage at this node. Okay, so get out your trusted calculator. 15, 24, 15, and we get 4.6 equals 4.615. And I always do calculations twice because I'm prone to pushing wrong buttons. So 15, 24, 15, and divide 12 times, 4.615. Okay, so we have four, 0.615 and that voltage will never change. This is always going to be 12 volts. This is always going to be ground. This will always be 4.65. So we've set up a reference. We've set up a, a, a place where this, this thing is going to switch. So if it's greater than 4.6 volts, it'll switch. And if it's less than 4.6 volts, it'll switch. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the way it's set up. All right. So uh, it's a comparator, right? And so uh, we, we know it's inputs, it's got two inputs, and then the output goes to the transistor through a 10K resistor. Uh, you can't hook things directly up to bases, you need, you need some current limiting on the base, so they put in a 10K here. And then it's got some resistors uh, across it, and uh, it's got a capacitor across it too. So I don't think we've seen circuits like this before. Um, Okay, so we're in a quandary now. Uh, we said this is never going to change, and this will never change. We have ground coming in, okay? So we're going to be, uh, we have this node here, and so now we're, now we've, now we're questioning ourselves. Now we're saying, uh oh, this never works. This, 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 this switching thing never works. The only, the only way this could possibly work if this was actually this voltage, the voltage that actually goes out. If the, if the voltage that goes out goes into this chain, then it'll go up and down, and then we can run into a comparator and then change ranges, and that all makes sense, but that's not where it's coming from. It's coming from this 12 volts, so we don't understand something. Um, so we need to back up. Okay, we don't understand something. Don't panic. It's okay. There'll be lots of times when we don't understand things. Still don't understand things. All right, so we'll come here in the 12, and we'll say, oh yeah, it comes through this 12 volt regulator, and then it just goes on its merry way. So, well, it doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense. And then you notice this wire here. Well, well, where does that wire go? That wire comes down here. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. It goes into this thing. Is that of interest? Hmm. I don't know. That doesn't make sense. There's this funny thing down here. I don't know about that. So anyway, so we don't know how this works. This doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem like it would work. Okay. Well, if you don't understand something, just make a note. You know, make a note. One, <laughs> like 12 volts. 12 volts? Okay, I'll make a note. All right. So what do we do? We don't give up. <laughs> we do not give up. So let's uh, start looking at the rest of it then. We think we know what this is doing. And it would make sense if this was hooked up to something else, except for just solid 12 volts. It would make sense. It would do its thing. So we understand what it's trying to do. So that makes sense. All right. So let's see. What's another good place to start? So now we've got this big jumble in the me mess in the middle. And that's going to be the really complicated part. And what can we, what can we, what can we do to think about this? Okay. Well, we know that this is a constant current, constant voltage supply. 
So it's going to have something that adjusts, adjusts voltage. It's going to have something that adjusts current, right? So we'll look at the schematic and we go, ah, here's a potentiometer, and here's a potentiometer, and here's one, and here's one. There's a bunch of them. But these have big boxes around them. That's interesting. Let's look at the ones that have boxes around them. Um, this one's labeled V, and this one's labeled A. Oh, maybe voltage and amp. So we're gonna we're gonna first say okay well let let's say that this adjusts this adjusts voltage and this adjusts current. Well, this one goes into this op amp and this one goes into this op amp. So that's a lot familiar, right? So this is our current adjust op amp and this is our voltage adjust op amp. And let's see, they go into diodes. So there's a clue. There's a clue. So the output of the op amp is going through a diode. So the only thing this circuit can do is pull down. It can't pull up, but it can pull down. And this one can only pull down. It can't pull up, can only pull down. And remember, we saw this before in the other little power supply. The current went in over to the voltage side and it pulled down. If, it, if the current got too big, it pulled down on this voltage section and that's the way they did it. Okay, so we've seen this pull down thing before, but now we have the voltage section also pulling down. Okay, so we can do like a thought experiment. I love thought experiments. You know, you don't need to do anything. Just think. Um, Einstein was really, really into that sort of thing. He really liked thought experiments. So what could we do with this? We could pull down with current and we can pull down with voltage, which means let's say that we have something that always puts Let's say we have a faucet and we turn it on full blast and it's always full blast. And we have one thing that can turn the faucet down and we have another thing that can turn the faucet down. So we must have some type of electrical circuit that always outputs the maximum amount of voltage. And then we can limit that by voltage or we can limit that by current. So this circuit over here must just be like turn on full blast. And then there's some ways that we can go in there and tell it, nope, not, not so fast, not so fast. We're going to pull it down, slow it down. And so we can lower the voltage either because it's too much voltage or because it's too much current. Okay, so I claim now that we understand this diode and this diode and this op amp and this op amp. And we know that and we know that. So we're kind of ballparking it in, right? Okay, we can adjust the current, we can adjust the voltage, and these things are going to pull down on something, which means they pull down on something. So let's figure out what the something is. Okay. So we talked about this part of the transformer. This part of the transformer comes up here and it generates a ground and it generates a positive, okay? So the positive comes up here and it goes along here and it goes to this transistor. Ah, so this is a dead giveaway. This transistor is a 2N3055. This is one of the most ubiquitous transistors anywhere big TO3 power transistor, and they are bulletproof. They are absolutely bulletproof. They're like good for 12 amps, and they just never blow up, boy. <laughs> They're just great. They're just like tanks. So 2 and 3055s, old friends. And it's in a box too. So I'm thinking what the box means is that it's not on the PC board, it's someplace else. So this big power transistor is probably on the back panel where there's a big heat sink. And these boxes here are the adjustments, and they're on the front panel. Okay, that's why they're in boxes. They're not on the PC board. They're, they're someplace else. Okay, so 3055. So this must be our main path. This must be our main voltage, and it goes through the, 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 the 3055. That's a pass transistor. It passes it, and then it comes out here, and it goes to here, and it needs to come out over here. Okay, so it needs to come out over here. This goes up to here. Ah. And then there's a path here. All right, so does that, does that make sense? We're going to go through this resistor and go through that resistor, and then we're going to hit this, tran this, this, this pass transistor. So this is our regulator. This one transistor regulates everything. But then it goes through these two resistors. Well, we've seen that before for detecting current. So these are probably big resistors. Let's take a look. Big in wattage, small in ohmage. Yeah, this one's a 0.33 ohms. 0.33 ohms, and it's 5 watts. Okay, so that's a biggie. And then it comes through a second one here. This is 0.03 ohms, 
and it says PC board. Looks like a second PC board. There's another PC board here. 0 0.03. Okay, so anyway, there's another 0 0.03. This is how many watts, but there's another 0 0.03 over here. Okay, and it's someplace else. And this one has little current plus current minus signs going across that resistor. So that's the resistor that's used to measure current. So why do we need two of them? Why don't, why don't we just use that one? This resistor must be used someplace else. Oh, that resistor goes over here to our current op amp. So remember there's a, uh, a display on the front panel, one's for current and one's for voltage. Well, I think this one is used to measure the current on the display. And it's in little squares here, and it's in a square, which means it's on the front panel. So this is probably part of the unit. So there's probably a little display that does volts and a little display that does current. And this is part of the little display that does current. So it has a 0 0.03 ohm shunt in it, and it runs through there uh, going, uh, go, going out, okay? All right, so I think that makes sense. And then this one, this, trans, this resistor here, we're going to use for our current measurement. So they use that one, we use this one. Okay. All right, so 0.33, and then it comes into here. Okay, that's so going to come, it's going to come into our, uh, come into our comparator. And this little capacitor that goes across the comparator, that's just to slow it down a bit so it doesn't uh, oscillate. You don't want, when you get close to a, uh, a threshold, you, do, you want a little bit of hysteresis, you want a little bit of dampening, so that, that little, uh, that little uh, uh, capacitor helps there. And then the other side goes to our potentiometer, so that makes sense, right? So we can set the current here, and we can measure the current here, and we can compare the two, and then if it's too much current, we pull down on that diode. So I think we now understand everything here, right? So what else is hooked up to this? There's another potentiometer here. And then that goes up to our friend up here, 2.5 volts. Okay, so we're using our 2.5 volts here as a really solid reference to, to bias this so we can generate a nice voltage here. And it's going to be a tiny voltage because we're going across to 0.33 ohm resistor, so it's a small voltage we're looking at. So we're using this, this 2.5 volt reference, and we're using this probably as a cal. Okay, so this is calibration. Okay, to make sure the uh, amps are set correctly. We're not outputting too many amps. It's rated at three amps, so it probably adjusts. This probably adjusts it so you can't go above three amps. All right, so I think I, I think we all understand that. And this goes to ground. Okay, that just goes to ground. So I think we understand that. And then let's see how they measure the voltage. We know this one's doing voltage, so let's see here. We've got uh, we've got ground hooked up to the negative. So we have an op amp with ground on the negative, and we have something coming in the positive. So this is just a buffer. That's all it is, is a, is a buffer. And uh, let's see here. We're going to come out here, and we're going to go through this little resistor here. And then we're going to go over to here, and we're going to go to... Uh, we're going to go to this, and once again, we're going to go up all the way to our two and a half volt reference. So we're going to put two and a half volts on on this, and we have a cal here too. So we have a voltage cal. So this is cal, and then we have the knob on the front, which is voltage. And so then the other side doesn't make sense. It's going to ground. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. We don't want to go to ground. We want to actually measure something. Hmm. So I'm not sure I really understand that one. Uh, why are we going to ground? I don't think, I don't think that sounds right. This would make more sense if this were going over here to the positive. We're measuring the, uh, the voltage here on the positive, right? Well, but we understand its functionality, so that's important. So we're just going to put another question here. Question here. Volt. Uh, negative input. So we don't understand that. We don't understand 
uh, see my, my little, little notes up here. Um, we don't understand that. All right. So what else can we do? What else can we do? We understand, we understand what this is doing and we understand what this is doing, but we don't understand this mess over here. Mm -hmm. We don't understand this mess. So it looks really weird to me. I've never seen a configuration like this. Doesn't make any sense. Whenever anything doesn't make any sense, it's important to redraw it. Okay. So again, let's redraw this one. All right. So we're, it's going to be part of this 3055. So that's what I would base this all off of, right? I would, I would first draw the 3055 like this. Okay. Cause it's the pass transistor. Um, it's the pass transistor. So this is the 3055 2N 3055. All right. So we want him on unless we're pulling down on current or we're pulling down on voltage. So he just needs to be biased on and they're biasing them on with something here. So let's see how they do that here. Let's see. Is this all in camera? Maybe I better zoom out a bit for this. Um, okay. So what do we have here? Okay. The base comes down. And there's a resistor here. Okay. And that is a 1K. And then this comes down. And there is a 10 ohm. That's interesting. 10 ohm, half a watt. Okay. Uh, we need a lot of base current. If this thing's going to pass three amps, it has a HFE of probably 20 to 40, maybe on the 20 side. So yeah, we need a pretty good uh, base current. So we've got 10 ohms there. So that makes sense. And where's that 10 ohms coming from? So that 10 ohms then goes into another resistor, but that's only a 1K resistor. So that can't be the path to bias this thing on. That 1K must be for something else. So we're going to ignore him for a while. And there's another transistor here. Okay. There's another transistor. So let's draw him in like this as well. Okay. Because we're trying to get current going this direction and we need more base current going that direction. So here's our helper transistor. He needs to go into that. He needs to go in that direction as well. So he's a helper transistor. All right. And he comes over here and he needs a helper transistor. Ah, Okay. So he has a help helper help transistor, otherwise known as a Darlington. All right. So, all right. So this is what we have here. We have a Darlington and then this comes out and it's going to go to a hundred ohms, two watts. Two watts. So that makes sense. So two watt, half a watt, it's only 10 ohms. So you, half a watt's okay there, but we're bringing in lots of current to turn, to turn this guy on. So we, he has a helper transistor and he needs a helper transistor, right? So this is going to be our control here, right down here to turn it on. Let's see where that hundred ohms goes. Okay. That hundred ohms comes, uh, over to here. And he then goes up to this 12 volt regulator. That makes no sense. He should be connected to, oh no, that makes sense. That makes sense. He goes up to the 12 volt regulator. Okay. So plus 12, there we go. That's it. So we have plus 12 goes into a hundred ohms and then goes into a 10 ohm. So let's say that then that that's a hundred, it's 110 ohms total, right? So we've got 12 volts and we've got 110, oops, 110 volt, 110 ohms. And that's hundred milliamps, 110 milliamps. So hundred, 110 milliamps to turn on the, uh, the 3055. So hopefully that's enough. Okay. So I think we now understand where's my, where's my magic marker. I think we understand this and these and this and this, we understand all of that. Okay. And then we still have this control voltage down here. We haven't gone that far. So that one, let's see, there's another, 
biasing thing. Okay, so there's a bias here. All right, so there's a bias here. This is 1K.